Welcome to the second lesson of this unit. Uh, today we're going to discuss factorization. And as you know, factorization is just the reverse of expansion. So how do you know that uh, somebody, some expression has already been factorized? Well, you know that by looking at the expression you get, and if it's a product of factors, then this is factorization. Of course, the product, when expanded, should be equivalent to the original expression. Uh, there are several methods of, uh, of uh, factorization, and I'll go over them quickly. There is very little that is new here, but let's, it's a good idea to revise them. First of all, the easiest method of factorization is taking a common factor. If you look at this expression, and let's say you want to factorize it, you look at the constants, the 12 and the 18, you look at the variables, the x squared and the x cubed, and you ask yourself, what is the highest common factor between the 12 and the 18? And obviously, it's 6. So, you write 6. What's the highest common factor between the x squared and the x cubed? Well, it's the x squared. So, this is your common factor, and you're left with 2 because 2 times 6x squared gives you the 12x squared minus and you have 3x also if you look at this expression 3b plus 9bc obviously there is a 3 that is the highest common factor between the 3 and the 9 and a b is the highest common factor between the b and the bc. So, a common mistake that people do is that when they write out the common factor, which is 3b, they forget to write something here in the place of what used to be 3b inside the bracket. Please don't forget this 1 plus 3c. Finally, if you look at this expression, 3x plus 2 minus y times x plus 2, the common factor in this case is not a letter, it is an entire bracket. And so the common factor is simply x plus 2 taken inside the bracket, and what remains, sometimes you put a square bracket, it doesn't matter, what remains of this term is this 3, and what remains of this term is minus y. You can write it this way, or you can simply write it as x plus 2 times 3 minus y in round brackets. Obviously, the common factors can be negative as well. Now, this is easy, and you know it very well. Let's look at a special case of taking common factors, which is taking a fractional factor, when the factor itself is a fraction. Consider this. You may think of taking a 5 in the denominator, because 5 is the highest common factor between the 5 and the 10, and an x in the numerator, because x is the highest common factor between the x and the x squared. Okay, let's try. So, let's write x over 5. What remains of this bracket is 1 plus x over 2. And if you think about this, when you expand x over 5 times this bracket, you will get x over 5, and when you multiply x by x, it's an x squared. 5 times 2, it's 10, and it's correct. But, to be honest, it's ugly. It doesn't look nice, because there are two fractions. One here, and one here. And it just is not pretty enough. Personally, I would suggest doing something else. How about not doing that? How about taking a common denominator, writing the two fractions as a single fraction? 
and the common denominator in this case is obviously 10. So let's do this in a different color. Let's do times 2 over 2. This becomes 2x over 10 plus x squared over 10. Now we have a common denominator. And if we take a common factor out, it's obviously going to be the x from the numerator and the 10 from the denominator times, and that leaves us with 2 plus x. Those two expressions are equivalent, but I think that this looks nicer. You could also write it in this form, x times 2 plus x. all over 10 and it is still factorized another example could be this in this case you have to find the common denominator which is the LCM of the 7 and the 5 and I would say okay let's multiply by 5 over 5 and this by 7 over 7. And this gives us ten A divided by thirty five minus twenty eight A squared divided by thirty five. And now the common factor is for the denominator, it's 35, obviously. In the numerator, the highest common factor between the 10 and the 28 is a 2. Between the a and the a squared is an a. And then you're left with 5a, sorry, 5 alone, minus 14a. And now you have factorized this expression by taking out a fractional factor. The second method of uh, factorization is related to expansion and that's grouping. But it's basically uh, it's taking a common factor out but over two stages. In this case we have four, four terms in the expression. And it's obvious that we have a common factor of x between those two and a common factor of y squared between those two. So we take the factor a out, the factor x out, that leaves us with a plus b. Then we take the factor y squared out, but don't forget the sign, of the, which is plus in this case, y squared, and, the, and we have a plus b inside the bracket. Now, we have a plus b multiplied by x and a plus b multiplied by y squared, so a plus b itself is a factor between those two terms, and we can say that Taking out the common factor a plus b leaves us with x plus y squared. And now this is a product of two brackets, so it's factorized. If you expand those two brackets, you'll end up with this expression. You have to be very careful when taking out factors, because in this case, there is a change, or there's a a difference of signs. So between those two factors, those two terms I mean, there's a common factor of n and here, at least in the face of it, there seems to be no common factors. So let's see what happens. If we take n as a common factor, we're left with an s plus mn. And if we look at this uh, set of two terms, it's minus s minus mn. Those 
are exactly the same as, as the two terms inside this bracket, but with a difference in sign. So if we take a negative 1 as a common factor, but obviously we don't write the 1, so it's minus, and this leaves us with an S plus MN. Now we have two identical brackets, so the common factor is S plus MN, and we're left with M from this term, and negative 1 or minus 1 from this term. So, so this is the factorization of this expression. The third way of factorization is the difference of two squares. And it's easily recognizable because you have a perfect square, which is the 64, a minus sign, never a plus, it's a difference of two squares, and another perfect square. And if you know your uh, expansion, then this is the result of multiplying 8 plus z times 8 minus z. You have to be careful sometimes to remark that, for example, in this case, the expansion is 4, uh, I mean the factorization is 4 plus a squared times 4 minus a squared. The square root of the 16 is the 4, and the square root of a to the 4 is the a squared. However, you don't stop there, because this, this bracket itself is a difference of two squares. This is the sum of two squares, and it cannot be factorized. So it's written without any changes, and you factorize this bracket, and it becomes 2 minus a times 2 plus a, and that's your factorization.